Almost got me yawning. I'm sorry. <laughs> Going nowhere oh, fast. God. We reached the climax together. Now we're undone. Wow. I feel really uncomfortable. I know. Imagine oh, had it just been the two of y'all. Till we separate. Oh. This is episode 14. Of the you are this highly pixelated right now. Yeah. You are too. I'm so glad you all can't see me. <laughs> we are the short this podcast YouTube show. We're back, episode 14. Steph breaks mm. everything that she touches, so you guys cannot see <sighs> her on the screen right now. So it's just me in big time. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. She wow. told us there were other reasons why she didn't want to show. She didn't want to have you guys drooling today because of the revealing oh clothes she had on God. today. I That's don't the have on revealing real clothes. reason I... why she didn't. I asked her to change several oh, times into something a little bit more uh, YouTube appropriate, and she just told me, "No, this is how I'm <sighs> feeling today." Today, she's last. in a you know Janelle Monae, um, just free herself type of way today and i said hey i am not going the to last, the last listen the so last. that's why we have her camera off today it, it just it concerns me that the last sure just so easily rolled off of your lips this like this is continue to feel the buster continue to feel the buster a pg-13 show and not an nc-17 show so we want to keep it that way we did go out big time Got us out with some cookie pop uh, popcorn that we're going to try here pop. today. Well, mine say cookie pop because I couldn't oh, find the Oh, you got a Snickers. different. You got the Oreo. I got the Snickers. I got they the Snickers. I went in five below. They had the Oreo, the Snickers, the Butterfinger, the Sour Patch Kids, which I've already had before. Gross. Um, they are not gross. You hate her. Mm, I bet you eat the Sour Patch cereal. Go ahead. I don't because it was nasty. The ice cream was nasty, too. Mm-hmm. But I tried. But my neighbor bought me some Sour Patch Kids. It's like the coal. It's the black raspberry. It's the Christmas one. Mm. And it's mm. so good. I love Sour Patch Kids. I can. I know that. Listen, <laughs> we don't know what type of cookie pop or candy pop popcorn stuff has. It's because. Oh, my God. She I wants have to the eat her popcorn in a nude. I have so, on clothes. I have on a t-shirt and sweats. I have on clothes. Nobody knows that but you. Listen. Oh so my God. again, you know, we show what we got here today. I was unfortunate in not finding them. I didn't know that they carry them in five below. So that was a place I should have went to. I, they got everything in five below. They even had the candy corn one. Wow. And I don't okay. like candy corn. Okay. Well, Steph, you are next up. Mm-hmm. With picking what we will be trying next week, what do you got on the plate for us? Let's talk. So next week, um, they have these drinks. You, I see them often in um, Walmart whenever I go in there. They're um, alcoholic beverages. They're called Truly. I think you've seen them. They have like the variety pack. I want us to try the holiday pack. Truly holiday pack yeah it's four different flavors in there i'm trying to flip my picture and see what flavors they have hold on they have um a cranberry a sangria a pear martini and a blackberry scramble Ooh, okay all right they are at walmart yes i'll send the picture and target okay you see them all right all right john let's go half on the box three stars I see 2.8. I didn't even look at the range. Close enough. I just saw them in Walmart. I do see 3.9. Ooh, y'all, this candy, oh. this candy pop is low in sodium. That's a is seltzer. It? Only 15 Oh, these are hard man. seltzers. Yes. Woo. All right. You got they, it. They have, like, they have so many variety packs. I counted six. But I was like, let's try the holidays. So it's, it's close to Christmas. Berry Bramble, Pear Martini. Holiday sangria and cran orange, huh? Yes. 
Holla at your boy. Okay. I'm just looking at the nutritional content of this candy pop, and I'm just happy that it's low in sodium. Oh. It's 24 good. grams of sugar, so. On your candy pop? Mine says 18. Mine says 12. Holla at <laughs> your boy. And I have the Snickers, John. And how many well, sodium? I'm sorry, twelve grams. I'm sorry. It says fifteen grams of sodium, and milligrams of sodium, and um, eighteen grams of carbohydrates of sugar. Mm, okay. Oh, twelve grams total sugar. Total carbohydrates is eighteen grams. Let's open these up. All right. So while we do that, let's uh, Ooh, that's on the yummy. podcast. That just came out on Tuesday. If you guys are not already subscribed, please make sure you listen to our original podcast show that come out on streaming apps every Tuesday. The big topic of the day of that op- of that episode was um, the head coach of Historical Black College University, primetime Neon Dion Sanders, leaving to accept a job at a... PWI school, Colorado. Is it Colorado State or is it University of Colorado? University, University of, of Colorado. Colorado. Okay. So he has taken that and I've, you know, we talked about it a little bit and we've seen quite a bit of different takes on it. Um, I want to real quick just kind of follow up on a few things with that and then we can touch on uh, the Tuesday showdown in Georgia. Um <clears throat> A report has come out, and this is just hearsay right now. And, uh, you know, we're just going to talk about it. And we don't know if this is true or not, but it says, according to my source, this was posted from a gentleman by the name of Albert Coleman. He stated Jackson State University is in the hot seat for misuse of football funds. Individuals was stealing money from football program by moving it to general funds slash scholarships basically stealing from Dion and players 80% of why Dion Sanders is leaving. This will be the next breaking news and the plot thickens. Let's run it down. JSU put in Dion's contract that after 30,000 ticket sales, he would receive a percentage of the sales that didn't happen the whole time he was there. The ticket sales got missing Dion, the football team, nor the staff saw any of that money. There was a lucrative TV deal in place that Dion wanted to get, but the university did not. Dion, with his own money, built a new locker room and tennis courts. All the new designs out of Dion's pockets. The new players' lounge, Dion. He also used his own money to feed his players. All the fancy meals you saw the players eating, Dion. When JSU went to the Celebration Bowl last year, the school didn't have didn't give any money back to athletics. Dion used a lot of his personal money to fund numerous things around campus. The university did not help. The president wanted his name in the headlines as much as Dion. Dion wanted to coach the Celebration Bowl this year. JSU president said no, and the Celebration Bowl is sold out. The jury is out on if he will or not. A last-minute offer was made for $1 million for Dion to stay, but he had to pay his staff out of that. There was no new offer made after the first year of success. So <clears throat> before we continue, um, before I say anything or even Steph says anything, one thing that we we glossed over on the podcast, and I'm going to make sure that I bring this up on the sports podcast when we discuss it a little bit more, is that um, a lot of times, a lot of conversation that I've been seeing from people online is that a lot of people that have not been to an HBCU went to an HBCU are speaking on this and you know it, it's like you shouldn't be able to speak on it because you didn't go to an HBCU kind of like telling another black person hey if you've never been discriminated against or you've never been pulled over by the police or you've never been um you know, um, if you're not married to a black person or, you know, if you're you don't shop at a certain place, you have no right to speak on black issues. Um, I get that. Right. You know, because, you know, of the experience at HBCU. But the one thing that we, we glossed over and failed to mention is that on our own show, uh, we have a young man that was recruited 
as a student athlete at a historical black college and played at a historical black college um, football there for a couple of years. So his insight <clears throat> is um, as important and prevalent as anybody else that has went to an HBCU because not only was he a student, he was a student athlete. Um, so John, I know you kind of spoke on it the last time when we talked about this on the podcast, but you know, hearing the, what's been going on the dialogue in the media, you know, Bomani Jones came on and had his conversation, his take, and then reading what I just read, I'm sure you've come across it as well. What would you have to say in light of some of the ones that are screaming out that he made promises that he didn't keep? Um, he used the HBCU, um, Jackson state, so to speak, or, you know, he, he's, he's just like every other black man. What, what, what are your thoughts you know, being that you were a student athlete for an HBCU, um, you you went through a you know, uh, a, you you've been a part of a coach firing uh, that happened yeah. at the school. So, just wanted to kind of get your take real quick on on your thoughts on this whole Deion Sanders thing. More of your thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to be the spokesperson, or um, I can only speak for myself. I'm not going to speak for all. HBCU attendees or alums or anything of that nature. Um, as far as the uh, as far as I can understand why uh, HBCU alums or uh, just people in general black folk were upset with uh, Dion Center may be selling a dream, but, uh, you know, my personal feelings aside, everyone else's personal feelings aside, business doesn't care about your feelings. At the end of the day, Dion's job was to put butts in the stadium. And that's exactly what he did. And if the allegations are true, and from what, what I've read, He's funded a lot of upgrades, uh, new additions to the JSU football program, and not just the football program, but uh, to that university. Uh, what gets glossed over is, um, I want to say during the pandemic, when a rival in Mississippi, Mississippi Valley State, uh, they had a pro poor practice field conditions, um, and he offered to... I guess, upgrade their practice field. Um, I'm not certain if it was Mississippi Valley State or if it was another HBCU within the SWAC conference, but uh, that particular HBCU did not have medical personnel or training personnel on site for whatever reason. And he actually uh, supplied them uh, with uh, JSU uh, personnel. Uh, to fill in until they could find uh, an actual uh, training staff for for their football program. Uh, he took half of his salary, which is what I'm told, three hundred thousand dollars, and put it towards the finishing of the locker rooms, the players' lounge, um, basically the football facilities. Um. And then I actually had an opportunity to actually listen to Bomani Jones and understand why he was uh, disappointed with Dion selling a dream and say, stating that God told me that I needed to take the job at Jackson State University or whatnot. But I think the thing that gets glossed over within um, uh, his critique is HBCUs as a whole are underfunded. So black folks who are upset at Deion Sanders glossing over the fact that he poured his own money, he put his money where his mouth was into elevating Jackson State's football program. You need to be upset with the disenfranchisement of the Mississippi government, the Jackson, Mississippi local government for not supplying the funds and the financial capital in order to um, compete or field a, a better football program or a better university experience. 
those are the people you need to be upset with. Because I guarantee you, especially when that water situation occurred once again, if Dion wasn't there, it probably wouldn't have gotten remedied or in this particular case, it probably just was a patch job uh, as quickly as it did. Having been at, been at an HBCU and watching the Jackson State football players, uh, I had nothing close to what that football team had mm. with the contribution to Deion Center. I had nothing close to that. I remember we had to, uh, the, the only time we actually chartered a plane was when we had to go to either Florida A&M. This is in Dover, Delaware. went to Delaware State. Uh, either Florida A&M or Bethune Cookman. We had to drive all the way to South Carolina State. That was a long drive in a bus. And one of the buses broke down. And the uh what do you call that? The septic tank uh malfunction. Oh. Mm. So wow. not only did the septic tank malfunction, but the <clears throat> AC went out. And this is probably during the summertime as we're heading down to South Carolina State. So we're hot and we now smell like feces. Um, When I first went to Delaware State, once again, it's a wonderful institution, but the football facilities are on par with colonial football facilities. If not, the weight room was much bigger probably about three times bigger at Colonial High School than it was at Delaware State University. Jeez. The stadium might be a little bit bigger than Colonial High School, but once again, it's probably on par with University Stadium, Dr. Phillips Stadium, Boone Stadium, as far as um, capacity. The uh, practice field, we had batteries in the practice field. Um, it was poorly kept. Uh, the locker room is probably the original locker room that they had when they built Alumni Stadium back in the 1800s. Or whatnot. And I'm probably over-exaggerating, but once again, they're very old facilities. Um, I couldn't get a... Uh, I, I, we didn't have a trainer's table uh, like at, at Jackson State or any of the PWIs or anything like that. It was... um. Thankfully, uh, we didn't necessarily have to play a, uh, you know, power five conference at the time Mm -hmm. uh, to fund a football program. But once again, uh, we weren't afforded the luxuries that um, Dion was willing to pay out of pocket uh, to make these kids in order for them to play good. They have to feel good, too. So updating their hotel accommodations and their. nutritional needs that's key we didn't have that at delaware state at all Mm. matter of fact uh, as far as training goes i was happy to come back home every every summer i didn't stay at delaware state to train. i went back home in florida to train (laughs) yep you sure did i had better facilities uh available to me than i did at delaware state once again you know um you know it taught me a lot about training and stuff like that but resources matter Big time football. So, so go ahead. Let me ask you this, John. Um, we have a lot of high level celebrities that are alumni of these historical black colleges. Why aren't we seeing more people pour into their all matter like their school? Like why why are we seeing a non HBCU alumni. He's not an alumni of HBCU. He's coming in to coach, not coming in. He already has a brand. And, and, and this is one thing that I keep seeing, and I'm sure you two keep seeing. Well, he piggyback. He he used that as a building block or, you know, he used Jackson State. And I get it. You know what I mean? As far as his coaching credentials, it could have went one or two ways it went the right way where he had a great coaching record but what if he went there and he didn't have the record to back him up um 
would he still be accused of using him then? I mean, I, we're talking about Deion Sanders, one of the most recognized names in the world, and he's going to a HBCU that's probably not in the top 10 of his, recognized HBCUs. His name alone filled the seats. That's who filled it. His name. <laughs> um, He, he could have sold that on a rumor. He could have sold out that state uh-huh. around a rumor of him coming there. Yeah. So, I mean, is it, do you think it's, it's fair to say that he used Jackson state? It was mutual, but it was mutually beneficial to both sides. Mm-hmm. If, if anything, Jackson state probably benefited more off of it than Deion Sanders did. And, you know, when it comes to a, a FCS school, such as uh, Jackson state, a lot of coaches, especially if they're looking to elevate to uh, a Power Five school or just a Division One school in the FBS bowl subdivision, I was redundant, but um, some of those schools like Jackson State, Florida A and M, they're going to be transitional positions until they get the position that they truly want. Not saying that's what he he went into it, but I'm certain you know he 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 knew he wasn't going to stay there forever. Mm-hmm. So the fact that he stayed there three years, and he had money not just coming from his own pocket, but once again, P Diddy pledged to send one million dollars to Jackson State because he enjoyed what Deion Sanders was uh, creating there. Yeah. Um. You know, he got Michael Strahan to use his clothing company to furnish the children on that football team with jackets and and slacks and, and shirts. So everyone had a uniform instead of having them look like some AAU team traveling all over the country in an Astro van. He said Astro van. I can't. Um. Let's try these this popcorn while we continue to talk. But I, I do want to say something. Um because mm-hmm. 'cause I've been I've been thinking about this the last few days. One thing about us black people, folks mm-hmm. are gonna get mad at me. It seems like we are never satisfied. And I say that because I'm gonna use my favorites as an example. Over the last few years, Beyonce and Jay Z. Have they donated to to HBCUs? They set up scholarships through um, her Be Good Foundation. Does the About Love Scholarship? Uh-huh. Um, the Sean Carter Foundation. They sponsored the HBCU bus tour, and they sponsor scholarships. They partnered with Tiffany and Company, and they were giving scholarships to students going to HBCUs. And you know what I heard? Mm-hmm. They, they partner with those people. That's blood money. We don't want that. We they're hmm. they're Illuminati. We don't want their money. We don't like it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Beyonce, mm-hmm. when she got that platform at Coachella, the first black woman to headline Coachella, you know what she did during her set? She paid homage to HBCUs, the entire set. Mm-hmm. I actually saw that set. It was a fantastic set. It's still on Netflix for those of you who haven't seen it. And people still weren't satisfied. But guess what? If they sat back. And they never donated it. They would complain about that too. People are never satisfied with anything. Let me try my popcorn. And that irritates the crap out of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to say, before we continue, um, I really like my popcorn. Well, you have the Oreo, right? Mm-hmm. I got to tell my friend Nakia about that because she loves Oreos. I actually bought the Oreo too. Mm. The Snickers isn't bad. Does it have peanuts in it? It has mm-hmm. peanuts in it, yeah. Damn it. You know, I've tried the Sour Patch Kids too, and it wasn't bad either, but this is good. These are dangerous. Mm-hmm. Man, all I need is some milk. <laughs> you need some milk. But I can't eat a lot of these at a time because sugar will have me hyper. My mom will have to tell y'all about uh, the couple of days I spent with her at the beginning of November and I had too much sugar Halloween night. Yeah, she was about <laughs> to put me out of her house. What, is that, what, is that, what does that look like? You um, get too hyper. Y- y'all know I talk a lot anyway. 
But when I have a sugar rush, I'm talking a mile a minute. I'm bouncing all over the place. Like you have to physically sit me down. Oh, wow. um, I can't sit still. I'm, you know, I'm over here one minute, over there the next minute. It's, oh my it's God. Bad. It's they found you in Debo chicken coop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my mom, yeah, this is the first week of November, Halloween night. I went and I had a little too much candy and my mom kept saying, oh my God. So my brother asked her, like, what's wrong with your daughter? She's like, she had too much sugar. I think they forgot Mm. that I can't have a a lot of sugar like that. Hmm. Thank you for that note. Listen, because after I ate that cupcake at your party, I was sitting in the hotel just up. Oh my God. (laughs) That cupcake um, is delicious. Yeah. Well, I will say that I I can understand for me, I can understand some of the kids that may have decided to come to the college because of Dion and now he's leaving. You know, I would be upset as well. Um but for the adults that are acting as if this has been an act of treason or this man has wow. committed a crime, I mean. Writing these dissertations on social media and stuff. Yeah, I mean, who doesn't? Are you still living in the hood? You know, if you grew up in the hood, are you still living in the same place that you lived in? Are you still working at the same first job that you worked at? I mean, hell, are you even working at a black owned uh, corporation? Uh, we all desire and strive, you know, to move and not be snag- stagnant. Not saying that Dion was going to be stagnant, but, you know, if these rumors are true, let, let's not even look at the rumors. The man isn't he, he's he's funding and he's building. He came he left Jackson State in a hell of a lot better place than what it was before he got there. And that's what you would want to do at any when you bring in someone, that's what you want them to do with any type of position or anything with a job. You want them to make that place better than what it was before they got there. And he did that 10 times fold. And to, you know, attack this man the way that they they are, you would think historically with HBCUs, the coaches never leave. There's only been one coach that never left, and that was Eddie Robinson. Everybody else, you know, either they got fired or and, and or moved on. And like I said on the show, if the man had got fired, would you guys be screaming from the top of your lungs the same way you are with him leaving? Because as John stated earlier, this is a business. So if he didn't produce, even with him going, giving, uh, um, taken out of his pocket to upgrade facilities and and do all these things. If he had a couple of losing seasons, guess what? Jackson state would have said, no, we couldn't beat. Mm -hmm. And we keeping your money. Yes. Um, real quick before we, um, get out of here. I know last week we talked about, you know, the Herschel Walker and Ralph Warnock, um, runoff. Raphael. Raphael. Listen, you <laughs> yeah. know, Keith will give you a whole new name in a heartbeat. I'm going Ralph. So, <laughs> Ralph. The, uh, that was yesterday. Well, mm-hmm. when this dropped on Tuesday. What was the final percentage? Oh, I forgot. Raphael Warnock won by 2.8. Percent. Yeah. Wow. He had like fifty one percent of the vote or something like that. Yeah, that was the largest margin of victory since uh, two thousand. Mm. And that was a Democrat. I forgot the guy's name, but it was a Democratic. Uh, uh, he was in a de- de- Democratic senatorial race. He that guy went by I think uh, twenty point three three percent. In good old Georgia. But uh, another Democrat hadn't won since since Raphael Warnock. And once again, he's won twice now. Mm-hmm. Well, technically four times mm-hmm. um, in the general election and runoff <laughs> in 2020. And, Man. and now uh, the uh, midterm election and the second runoff mm-hmm. in 2022. 
So this is his fourth time. So um, yeah, it got called. Um, I want to say when I think ninety five percent of the precincts had reported in. Mm-hmm. There was no way Herschel Walker could make up those votes. So Atlanta. Metro Atlanta. Metro Atlanta. You guys Metro. showed up. Clayton, DeKalb, South Fulton. I'm not giving all of Fulton County the credit. South Fulton, Clayton, DeKalb. We thank y'all because, uh, yeah. Even yeah. y'all over there, was that, uh, Columbus? Mm-hmm. And uh, Savannah and Athens. Oh, yeah. Savannah showed out. I was shocked. They, big time. they showed Metro. out. But the thing, you know what? I guess I've been, you know, because I am a Southerner, and you know, is that Hawthorne, Savannah? What's the, what's the what's the county name? Um, um, oh gosh, it's not. It Hawthorne. is it's not, not Hawthorne. Hawthorne. It is. I was about to say Gotham. No, it's not Gotham. It is Chatham. Uh, is it Chatham? Chatham. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I y'all may or may not relate because you know Florida is a different type of South. Um, <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, being born and raised in the South, the thing that irritated me, the one question I saw on social media yesterday that irritated me the most was, how is it that people are voting for Herschel Walker? And I'm like, have y'all been under a rock? This is the South, baby. Like, outside of Atlanta is the rest of Georgia. Racist, Confederate, will hang a Negro, Georgia. So for people to ask, how can people vote for Herschel Walker? Even though he's black, he was willing to be a pawn. You got to be a special type of racist to sit here and claim you're a Christian and you want to uphold Christian values, but you vote against the actual reverend. (laughs) (laughs) And then on top of that, you are he's for uh, pro uh, pro pro-life, but then he's also paying for abortions. Right. And beating on all of his wives and, and, you know, pistol whipping them and. And, he st- and they still was going to put him in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything other than the man, the people of God didn't want to elect the man of God. Mm. Mm-hmm. In the in the words of our friend Omar, 2022. <laughs> I thought you could say what a time to be alive. 20- he says that too. You're right. 2022. Yeah. Um. So now Herschel will fade back to obscurity we won't hear from him ever he's again. heading back to texas mm-hmm. yeah and they have no more use for him trump is so mad right now because um, that was his boy so trump has lost all of the people that he was backing they all lost right mm-hmm. yes was yeah. he, what happened with him and marjorie taylor green did they fall out because i think she won marjorie she won but then she she posted a uh, I don't know if there was a live stream or a live stream type of uh, campaign event Mm -hmm. telling her constituents to uh, if you if it's possible if you can if you if you can vote for Herschel Walker so I think their relationship is a bit strained maybe I'm I'm really certain because isn't she like one of the top uh, Trump Trumpian Mm-hmm. Uh, tropes that they have in the Republican Party or the the, the fringe part of the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what's up with that relationship, but um, I mean, she did tell her constituents to vote for Herschel Walker, but it wasn't a resounding, I think you should vote for this guy. It was basically one of those things. If you can stomach it, mm-hmm. just vote for him. Now, I want to say waking up this morning, because I listened to... to- news outlets from both ends of the of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. Um they've been talking about y'all's boy all day. Ooh. DeSantis. The jackass. These <laughs> That's going to be your new, next president. These people here in Georgia have been talking about him all day like now they're going to put their focus on getting mm-hmm. him in that white That's, house. That is the next president. Because You're Brian Kemp it here yeah. first. Brian Kemp fell out with Trump. Yeah. Listen, a lot of Trump lost a lot of support when he came out back in that vaccination. That is where the tide turned for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um the those people that the tide turned, they were never they're never gonna vote to the left ever. Mm-hmm. They're not gonna vote after January 6th, they're not gonna vote after Trump, you know, 
endorse that vaccination. Mm -hmm. what they were going to do is they were going to sit back and either take an L for the uh, second in a row, second um, four years in a row, or they were going to hitch their wagon behind someone that is, that has shown and has risen in power in the Republican party. DeSantis started his rise towards the last two years of Trump's presidency. And Trump, what he did, you know, of hindsight being 2020, is that he should have never endorsed and pushed him as much as he did. Uh, because had he not, the attention would not have been on DeSantis so much. He's a younger guy. He um, he p- plays to that main Republican red base in everything he's doing, the whole woke thing, protecting the white, the white people, period, um, by any means necessary, um, putting in some place to protect Cuban rights down here in Florida. Um, Hispanics are behind him as well. I think there's a lot of confusion with them. I think some of them think he's Hispanic as well because of his name. Um, And he also has not showed any fear with the COVID and the vaccination. And as you know, there's a lot of right wingers that were totally anti-vax. Um, and he has shown that he is such. And also to create a critical race theory thing as well. Yeah, um, they should probably should have listened to uh, Trump because... Uh study showed in Florida and Ohio uh, Republicans were 76% higher uh, death rates um, in, in between December, 2020, actually no March of 2020 and December, 2021. Um, That's all right though. Don't take away I just, my rights. I, I just, I just wanted to uh, put in that nerd fact that Republicans are more likely to die from COVID than Democrats were, but absolutely. And, and that's is what, what it is. Hey, so I, I think that the push is on um, a lot of the senators um, that were there during January 6th that were at first like, oh, OK, it's all right. It's a, you know, insurrection. Then all of a sudden shit got real. Their life was in danger <laughs> and Trump was hands off. They were like, how are you going to sit up here? You're in a safe space, but you let our lives be in danger. No, this ain't working anymore. And so um, he is going to it's going to be one of the ugliest races because he's not going to get any support. So he's going to show up and show out uh, just like he did with his last election. It's all going to be a fraud. And it's going to be funny to see because now. Everything that he's calling a fraud, it's going to be in-house between him and DeSantis. So, you know, do you believe you did, you believed him before with the national elections. Do you believe him with the Republican uh, party runoffs? Do you believe it's a fraud? Cause you believed him, you know, four years ago, why not still believe him? That That's going to be funny to see uh, with how they do things. But DeSantis is definitely going to be the front runner. Um, and I believe he's going to, unseat Mr. Joseph Robinette Biden. Somebody needs to. I mean, listen, let's be honest. Um, I'm I'm no fan of of Republicans. Well, I'm no fan of Democrats either, but it's like, yeah, it's like, it's not like uh, it's going to be any different from what we're going through now. It isn't. It really isn't. A lot of people will say that. Think about it. When Trump got elected, we were all a little fearful. Mm -hmm. Nothing really changed, if we're being honest. Nothing has changed, no No. matter who's been in the office. Mm -mm. Nothing has changed. I mean, not for us anyway. No, no. And, and, And the excuse every time when black people do say that is, well, it takes having control of the House and the Senate. We had it. We've had it. Several times, and still nothing has changed. So, um, 
Interesting times. Georgia, you know, I've heard some questionable things about Senator Warnock. Oh, um, yeah. God, yes. And, you know, so it's not a full victory. I guess it was just he votes <laughs> under the right color in a sense. And so that's why it was a victory for black people. And again, I just want black people to start to look outside of the norms and think outside the box and, you know, create it. You, you, we have the power to create our own party. And, I, uh, yeah. It's like, if we could just come together, but you know, us, we ain't doing it. It's going to be some Stevens up there in the mix and can't do it. Won't do it. Mm-mm. Need winners. Can't play with them. Won't mm-hmm. play with them. Can't do it. <laughs> Listen, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, thank you all for the support. Thank you for last week's episode. We want to double those numbers this week. You guys yes. really showed out. Continue to subscribe, like. We need to see those subscriptions up. We jumped up about five or six subscriptions. Come on. We know you guys can do it. Subscribe. You're watching us. You're watching us. Just hit that subscribe button after you watch. And comment. Like and comment. Absolutely. Please. Thank you so much for listening to the Short Desk Podcast YouTube show. We'll see you next week.